Boy, oh boy, the uh, Pac-12 expansion news just continues to happen. And, and we've seen a lot of things in college football expansion. I think we've seen a lot of things in realignment and not much shocks us. I have to be honest with you when I say um, this, this Pac-12 lawsuit uh, against the Mountain West is shocking on a lot of levels. And I, I, am, I am one of those people who believes you sign a contract, you believe in it, and you follow it, and you abide by the terms. And that's exactly what the Pac-12 is not doing with the Mountain West. They filed, the Pac-12 did in federal court, a lawsuit trying to overturn a contractual agreement um, on these exit fees and penalties for poaching, an agreement they signed less than a year ago when the Mountain West reached out and did a favor for the Pac-12 and made a scheduling alliance so that the Pac-12 teams, the Pac-2, uh, you know, Oregon State and Washington State would have a football schedule this year and then turned around the Pac-2 did and poached members and put the Mountain West in a position where it is fighting for its very existence. And then when other universities in that conference said, nah, we're good, we're going to stay here, that wasn't good enough. The Pac-12 has now gone to court and is trying to overturn a contract so it does not have to pay exit fees and poaching fees. And that would essentially put an end to the Mountain West. And here we are again. Whether it is the Pac-12 originally melting down and we're suing over contracts, whether it is Florida State for a decade trying to find a way out of a grant of rights that they still have not found a way out of, you have college football dare I say, brain trusts who sign a contract and then don't like the terms of the contract a year down the road, so they head to federal court. Jake, I just don't see that the Pac-12 has a leg to stand on here. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, uh, just like you said, I mean, we have precedent here. We have clear examples of, hey, you signed a contract. Hey, you agreed to terms. And now because you don't like the terms and how they're affecting what you're trying to do, uh, you want to sue your way out of it. And that's the trouble that I have. And and I have to be honest, like the burnout on, on this type of behavior is, is getting real. Like as soon as I saw this come out yesterday, I immediately texted my guy over here and I'm like, dude, like, here we go again. Like how many times are we going to get, you know, uh, a, a conference or a team or a school or whatever it might be trying to sue their way out of a situation that they simply don't like. Not one that's like killing them, not one that that doesn't pay them or not one that, you know, just eviscerates any ability to move forward with what they're trying to do. No, we're just trying to sue to get out of paying fees that we agreed to uh, when we signed a, a, a contract. And that's what I just don't understand. Like, I, I get the, the premise of, hey, when we signed the deal, we didn't know that that this was the route we were going to be taking. We we at that time when we signed that deal, our thought was, hey, we're going to merge together with the Mountain West. We're going to you know, basically we're going to take the Mountain West. We're going to take these two schools and we're going to put a new conference together and essentially try to at that time rebrand under the Pac-12 well, umbrella. Isn't that why if you're the Mountain West, you put a contract in place to protect your isn't that yes, what a contract but, is yes, all about? No yes. matter if it's a real estate contract, an employment contract whatever contract you put a contract in place if you're the Mount West to protect yourself. Right. And the problem with that is, is that, is that we don't, and when I say we, I, I mean the proverbial, we like, like conferences, schools, like we don't care about that portion of it anymore. We just think, Oh, well we signed a deal. And now that we don't like it, that's eh, screw Gloria and the mountain West and all these peasants in the mountain West. Like we, we don't care about them. We, we, we want yeah. we don't want to pay our exit fees and we want your schools and we're going to try to rebrand this thing under the Pac-12. And that's what I don't understand, because the truth is, is that if you if you go out and you kill the Mountain West, you, do you understand how damaging that is to any future negotiations around realignment or expansion in this iteration of the Pac-12? Like, yeah, it's extremely damaging. Well, you look at what Gloria Navarre is, the commissioner of the Mountain West said yesterday, and I apologize. I know this is a huge a huge statement uh, that's not going to be easy to read. Uh, the Pac-12 Conference, Gloria Navarez, the commissioner of the Mountain West, the Pac-12 Conference is challenging a contractual provision that is expressly agreed to and acknowledged was essential 
to the Mountain West Conference's willingness to enter into a scheduling agreement, all while advised by sophisticated legal counsel. End of discussion. That's where this should end, but unfortunately, it's not. Gloria Navarez continued, quote, at no point in the contracting process did the Pac-12 contend that the agreement that it freely entered into uh, violated any laws. To say the Mountain West was taking advantage of the Pac-12 could not be further from the truth. Now that they carried out their plan to recruit certain Mountain West schools, they want to walk back what they legally agreed to there has to be consequences for these types of actions. And I just couldn't agree more, bro. Like, you, well, again, when you sign this deal, you did it not not realizing that, hey, like, you know, a year from now, we're, we're going to try to, you know, poach a bunch of these schools and we don't want to pay the exit fee because the exit fee is probably extremely heavy for these schools and for the conference probably. where it's at. And you just don't want to do that. And and that's where I say, bro, you're going to try and take this thing to federal court. Who are you? Florida State, Michigan, Clemson. Like, how many examples do you need to know that you're not going to win this? You're not. This well, is basic contract law. Right, but I also think that this is what's wrong with the, the Pac-12. And if, if I'm truth-telling, this is what's always been wrong with the Pac-12. And I was talking to somebody close to the Mountain West who said, this is why there was hesitation to merge with the with the, the Mountain West with the Pac-12. This is why there was hesitation to to you know act in good faith because apparently at one point the Pac-12 said well, we don't need contracts. Let's just schedule games. And Gloria Navarez, as we've told you on this show, I believe she's a savvy operator as a conference commissioner. She did exactly what she was supposed to do. And she did what she had to do to protect the, the Mountain West. And again, in this country, we have contracts for a reason. And at some point, we have to learn, especially in professional sports, to live with the consequences of our actions. And if you are the Pac-12, this is who you've always been. And it's why there's such a poor stigma and reputation around this conference. And I understand that there are a lot of brands in this Mountain West, and now maybe it is Boise State, who's always looked to the to the Pac-12 Shield is uh, you know with uh, loving eyes. I guess maybe they've always wanted to be under that helm. I don't know, but what I'm telling you is, at some point, we have to stop the destruction of of the little guy, and that's what this feels like. But here's the truth, and here's what the Pac-12 can't get away from. You're not the big guy. You're just a little guy trying to screw your neighbor. The Pac-12 is not some elite power conference. Even if they win this lawsuit, the Pac-12 will not be looked at as a conference that is going to get into uh, a situation where they'd have an automatic qualifier, where they would have uh, you know, college football playoff money guaranteed. That's simply not who you are. And frankly, it's not who you're going to be. There is nothing that tells us whether you win this lawsuit or you lose this lawsuit, that you are going to be looked at any different than the Mountain West is currently looked at and every other G5 is looked at. You're not a better brand. You're not a better product. You don't bring more people to the television. Even if you get UNLV, which I don't think you're going to, but even if you get UNLV, you're not a better product than any other G5 in the business. And that's what the Pac-12 can't get away from. And again, I point back to this Utah State situation. You freely added, you aggressively pursued Utah State, a university under a, a federal investigation for Title IX, violations that are the most heinous and are the only reason that Title IX exists today. And the Pac-12 overlooked all of that to add Utah State. And why did they do that? Because their belief is that adding Utah State cripples the Mountain West and would have forced other members of the conference to vacate for the Pac-12. So let me get this right. Again, you sold out your morals, you sold out your business values, and it got you absolutely nothing. That's who you are in the Pac-12. And I am, at, real. I am at a place, in all seriousness, I am at a place where this now has no... has has. In my opinion, 
has no other way to end than doing damage to college athletics. This lawsuit, no matter how it ends, will damage college athletics. Yeah, and I'm, I'm curious, you know, obviously we've talked a lot about how with the Pac-12, like Scott Barnes has, you know, holds a lot of water in the room, right? Holds a lot of water in the discussions and the conversations and in, in the way the conference is going about doing things. And I'm curious if, you know, because because I, I, I respect Scott Barnes. I respect the job he did, you know, uh, and is doing at Oregon State. But, but this type of behavior is not something that I like or am fond of. And, and I think that it's, it's just not, you're, you're not working in good faith by doing it this way. I am you're, so incredibly disappointed in you, Scott Burns. Yeah. Like I am, this is not who you ever were in the time that I've covered you at Utah state. And I, as I've watched you operate at Oregon state, this is not who you are, but apparently it is. Apparently, because Scott Barnes, whether whether he wants to openly say it or not, carries a lot of water in that Pac-12 town. And it's really disappointing to me that this is where we are, because all this says to me is. You don't care about anything but ending the Mountain West. I understand business is business. But at some point, when are the people in the Pac-12 going to figure out that karma is undefeated? Yeah. You continually try to screw people. And you continually get screwed by your actions. For you look what? at you look at this, and I I again will sit here and tell you, I think we've been pretty nails on what on what was going on. You look at what the AAC members did. USF essentially has said. Hey, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. USF said, there's no more money there. We're going to have to fly commercial because we do not have the budget to fly private. Right. It's too hard on our students. It's too hard on our staff. And there's no net benefit for us. There's no net gain. In fact, it'd be a loss. So did Tulane. So did Memphis. So did the AAC. And not only did you not get those members, you put the AAC in a position where they went to battle and built themselves in. And I'm sure that y'all in the Pac-12 are going to be like, oh, see, we're helping. We are building college athletics. We are making stronger conferences. Sure. I don't disagree that the Pac-12 trying to decimate the G5 to build a better conference is why the AAC went out and so aggressively courted and is on the verge of announcing private equity deals. No, no question in my mind about that. But don't you dare turn around in the Pac-12 and take credit for that. Because what you're doing is, is fundamentally wrong. It's, it's not what, and maybe I'm being utopic and, and, and virtuistic. Mm-hmm. This is not what college athletics is about. College athletics is about, I agree, competing at the highest level. But even if, again, even if you if you won all of these battles and all of the AAC teams and all of the Mountain West teams got into the Pac-12, you're not competing at the highest level of college football. Exactly. You're not. So you're the not a power conference. The, you're not getting an AQ. You're not getting college football playoff money. Yeah, the question of why are you doing this for what? Like, what's the, the end game has been a question since day one. I, I, I've been asking that question since since the first time you put out that garbage graphic of the Pac-12 insignia on a white background with, you know, logos. Like, yeah. You know, I've been asking that question since day one, and I think that it's, you know, it's a it's a really perplexing situation. You put this thing out when you announced that this was what you were going to do, and I was like, well, hold on. That's only six schools. You need eight, and ideally you'd be ten. Why would another school jo- join? from their current situation. And and that's my problem. You're doing all of this, which I agree is completely wrong, both morally, uh, from a financial situation, from a, just the health of college football situation. Uh, and it's not to, to be a P4. It's not to be any of that. And to have an automatic qualifier, and, to guarantee yourself college football playoff I mean, do you revenue. Think that, do you think that they legitimately believe that they can get – in AQ, do you? I mean, yeah, because I I, 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 I think they do because they the Pac-12 
continues to struggle with this one thing that I've talked about for what now, five years at least. The Pac-12 doesn't understand who they are and where they are. They don't get it. They never have and they never will. It's why it's why you you would not go all streaming with, with Prime Video. It's why you were trying to guarantee people in your conference $50 million a year and told them you'd get it and you never did. That goes back to what Larry Scott told us at Mia Days all those years. Oh, we're, we're talking to Google and... You know, I got the YouTube TV. How did that work out? It didn't. It didn't. And I, I, I am... As you can tell, I'm a little fired up over this. Well, but I, I think I, you I'm, should be. I'm like, tired of it. Yeah. Because this is terrible for college athletics. It's just not what has ever been right in the college football world. And I understand, like, you, you look at this situation at UNLV yesterday, um, where you have Matthew Sluka, the starting quarterback who as poor as he has been at throwing the football, the guy is one of the greatest rushing quarterbacks in, in, in his generation. He stopped and quit the football team yesterday. And why did he quit the football team? For, because he was injured, right? Or I, I you know, I'm going to focus on academics. No, uh, he quit the football team, uh, because he committed to UNLV based on certain representations that were made to me, which were not upheld after I enrolled. And it became clear that these commitments would not be fulfilled in the future. Just up and quit the football team. And you think going to the PAC 12 would have kept that kid on that football team. Do you think UNLV going to the PAC 12 puts them in a better spot or a, a, a spot where they could, whatever, let's believe the kid and say that they didn't keep their commitments. You think being under the PAC 12, um, crest would have helped them keep those com come on but but isn't that this is wild to me isn't that that again you know not to make it personal with sluka but that that type of behavior is exactly what's wrong with college athletics right now is but that is it sluka's fault or is it UNL and unlv's fault is it unlv's fault or is it nil's fault we're going in the wrong direction in college athletics yeah. that's why i referenced that yeah. we're going in the wrong direction you're starting quarterback just up and quit the team and UNLV fan, I don't want to hear that he sucks. And I don't want to hear that your starting quarterback just up and quit the football team. Yeah, but, and, and I think the problem is, is that it, it, there's been such a departure from like, hey, you know, this kid grew up in this city or this town and is a homegrown product through the, the you know, the peewee system and then high school, yeah. and, you know, and now plays, you know, at the major university in, in town. Uh, and so there's not that investment in in the team. So yeah, was he their starting quarterback? Sure, on the but, depth chart he was. But and they're was, admittedly they haven't won a game. They're terrible, right? Oh no, that's right. They're three and zero. Yeah, and they're be they're contender. three and zero, and they beat Kansas, which is a good win for a a Mountain West team who also beat Houston. You're three and zero, and you beat two Big Twelve teams doing it. And you up and quit the football team. Mm -hmm. This because is this you weren't is getting your money. This is who we are now. And this Pac-12 situation is a is the perfect example of what's wrong with college athletics now. And as to where the Pac-12 goes next, uh, I am shocked and amazed that this is what we're talking about. The Pac-12 is this power brand that everybody has to be a part of. So let's go and get UConn football. And multiple sources have confirmed that UConn and the Pac-12 have talked about football-only membership. Right. Are you out of your mind? If you're UConn, are you even, why are you answering the phone? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. So you don't have an on-campus stadium. It Football at UConn, for those of you who don't know, and I know we've detailed this in depth, football at UConn is a financial loss leader. They, they lose money on football games at home. They lose money on football games because they don't have fans, they don't sell tickets, and they don't sell concessions. Mainly because you got to drive 25 to 35 minutes to get to a UConn football game from campus, which is a real problem. They rent their stadium. They do not own it. It is not on campus. So now on top of that, you're going to fly your team commercial 
from Connecticut to Fresno to San Diego, Corvallis, Spokane. That's the, it, Logan, Utah. Do you know how difficult it is to get to Logan, Utah? Are you out of your mind? But yet that's where the Pac-12 is. You're talking to UConn. I'm shocked by it. Yeah, well, I mean. It I, is, I, it, I, I, and again, I'm not saying that it's going to happen. The, but the very fact that you had a phone conversation about it, and by all accounts, multiple conversations about it is shocking to me. Yeah, well, I mean, I think they're just desperate for brands. I, I, I with all due respect, like I don't think that they, they like their options. <laughs> like I, I think they're quickly realizing, okay, we're we're not going to poach any more Mountain West teams at this point. We can't take anybody from the AAC. So where does that leave us? Okay, well, we know that UConn was looking at the Big Twelve, so let's call UConn. I mean, that's you know, and and I agree, it's a terrible fit. Why would you ever do it? I, I agree with all that, but that's why I think. I, I, it's amazing. You, this smacks of desperation. It smacks that you, you can't get anybody else to join your conference. And again, I'm just going to stand on business with what we've reported. You were not close in my opinion. And I, 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 you can put conjecture and opinion into it. I don't believe that you were ever close to getting those AAC teams. It, we said in a video I put on Twitter yesterday, I think, or two days ago, that they were closing ranks in the AAC immediately. As soon as you made the announcement, and I was talking to a guy yesterday who made a very good point. The shot over the bow and the damage that you did to yourself by poaching those Mountain West teams put a lot of people on, on high notice. And I think more to the point, this was a poorly kept secret across college football, which is how it got out, by the way, because it wasn't a well kept secret, but it was a it was a poorly kept secret in executive circles in college football that the Pac-12 was going down this road, and I think that's why the AAC was able to get so far ahead of it, because I again ask, what is the value position? Because every sales transaction is. Here's value. Give me your money, right? How can I help you? What problem do I solve? And if I'm the PAC 12 and I'm on the phone with the AAC membership, I'm asking from the AAC side, what problem do you solve for me? I don't know either. Cause I don't see, and it, 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 I'm sure I know that we have a ton of PAC 12 homers on this show. I get it. I'm asking you, what problem does the Pac-12 solve for anybody in the AAC or the Mountain West? Because even if I'm Boise State, I'm asking you, Boise, what problem does the Pac-12 solve for you? More access? No. More money? No. Better TV deal? No. What problem does the Pac-12 solve for you? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I really do believe the only the only thing that could be going on here that you know made these schools move was, hey, we're going to go out and try to get a you know, uh, uh, an AQ and, and, you know, that's, that's the improvement. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I legit, I don't know what else you would be, you would be selling. I mean, I guess you could be saying, Hey, we're going to get, you know, a couple of TV distribution deals done where, yeah. you know, we're going to expand the CW thing and then prime and, you know, like, okay, cool. Maybe a few more dollars coming in, but it's, it's just not, I'm telling you, the whole thing has been done in in bad faith the whole thing it just from the onset because i don't believe and again my opinion i don't believe for a second that that you told the truth completely and in its entirety to the people who have joined like like you didn't say yeah you know probably not going to get an aq yeah probably not going to make um, you know enough money at, or a higher level of money that makes it worth your time and, but if you're boise like, state and you're being sold on because I'm with you. I can only imagine, and I've heard this before, I can only imagine that the, the pitch was, hey, we're going to have greater access to the college football playoff, and we're going to build brands and matchups that are big TV numbers, so we're going to be able to pull a bigger TV number than you're getting now in the Mountain West. Come and join us. But now you're stuck at seven, and you have... 
two really good brands in Boise and San Diego State, a third in Fresno State that's good, not great, and a fourth in the Pac-2 where Washington State is not, I don't believe, going to compete at a higher level. And I think Oregon State's a really good brand with really good facilities. So you don't have, in my opinion, great matchmaking. Because if I've got Georgia, Alabama, I'm certainly not watching Boise and, and San Diego State in a Pac-12 clash of the Titans. But but like even if you downgrade the the power matchup, like I I mean I would agree that everyone's going to watch Georgia, Alabama. But I, I like I like this week, you know, and and obviously it's only Wednesday. We haven't gotten to the slate of games, but I mean you look at this week, like Oak Colorado, State, K-State. UCF, Oak State, K State. Am I am like, I watching Oak State, K State, or am I watching? any matchup that the Pac-12 would put together. Because right now it's Boise, San Diego State are your two best brands. In college football, I'm watching Oak State, K-State. Yeah. That is for survival in this season's Big 12. It's crazy to me that this is where we are. So so that's why I say, like, the negotiations, the pitch, like, all of it have been done, in my opinion, in in bad faith. And when you operate in bad faith, bad things come back to you. And that's why I am confident that this whole lawsuit situation and like what you're trying not to pay, you, I, I don't see a way for them to win that fight. Now, if you said to me, hey, well, the Pac-12 is going to try to leverage the Mountain West into a settlement. That's why they're suing because, you know, they want to settle and they're going to try and get a discount on fees. Okay, mm-hmm. I guess, but I don't think that that's going to happen either because Gloria no. Navarra's, Navarra's statement is full of tone and is full of, hey, we're we're not putting up with this. You signed an agreement. Less than like, a year ago, well, you signed a contract. Like the terms are clear. You agreed to it. You signed it. So no, yeah. we're not we're we're not gonna just let you off the hook. And so the shocking thing to me, and this is why I brought up the Scott Barnes thing and, and anyone else in that in that Pac 12 group, you're watching the ACC situation play out. You're watching for years now, Florida State tried to find a way out of that situation, and they haven't. And you've seen what the courts have said. But uh, I, I just go back to, I'm just going to keep going to, why are you joining the Pac-12? Because you're not getting an AQ. Like, you look at the ACC or the Big 12. Both of them have AQs. Their conference champion goes into the college football playoff. Yeah. Period. The SEC and the Big 10. Their conference champions go into the college football playoff. No questions asked. Done. Automatic qualifiers. The highest ranked G5 conference champion goes into the college football playoff. Done. So what is the Pac-12? Do you think you're getting a second G5 AQ? You're not. Why would the SEC or the Big Ten? And then down the line the Big 12 and the ACC, and remember the managers of the College Football Playoff Committee are not just power conference representations. It's G5. It's it's full NCAA representation. The power conferences are not going to vote for that. And then you look at what we've reported on this show for the last week, that people are looking at the Pac-12 as absolutely killing the G5. And they're not looking at that in a good light. That's a terrible thing right. for the G5. You look at the membership and the representation of the Mountain West. Those are all people that have long-reaching relationships. So you think you're going to get an extra AQ. Why would those people vote to help the Pac-12 destroy the rest of the G5? Because <laughs> it wasn't just the Mountain West you went after. You've gone after everybody else. And you've lost. They all stuck together. So why would they vote to help you? Because the only thing that you could possibly believe if you're the Pac-12 is that you would find a way to have an automatic spot in 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 the college football playoff, which is not going to happen. Because you're not... Let's say you get everybody you've targeted. And I mean, the AAC, the, AAC, the Mountain, you get UNLV, you get Air Force, you get Tulane, Memphis, USF, UTSA. Everybody gets flowers. Right. 
Are you a better football conference than the ACC? No, no, you're not. Are you a are you a better? Are you the best G five conference? Sure, you are. Does that get you an automatic qualifier? It doesn't. Are you a better conference than the Big Twelve? You're not. So again, I just ask. All of this for what? That's the question that nobody can answer. Yep. Because you're not going to have a. Are you getting a ten million dollar TV deal without UNLV? Would appear that you would not. Are you, are you making more money? It would appear that you're not. Are you? Do you have private money just sitting on deck waiting? It would appear you do not. I don't understand what it's for. Yeah, I don't. All right, let's get into the comment section. As always, presented by our good friends at Prize Picks. I got bit in the um, ass by karma last night. I have a rule. You have all these rules. You have all these rules. Uh, I do not play Shohei Otani in prize picks. The great gambler. What have I told you? Seau Suzuki and Aaron Judge. Those are your horses. You ride those two dudes, you're going to win. Did I ride those two dudes last night? Only in my dreams. (laughs) (laughs) That came out wrong. Only in my dreams. No, I I went with uh, the great gambler, Shohei Otani. Did you guys see how the Dodger game ended? So Shohei needs, I need him to finish with three hits, runs, and RBIs. That's it. Three hits, runs, and show yeah. Should be pretty straightforward. I mean, that is as sure a bet as any that his former translator placed. Yeah. Okay, now I'm being a jerk. He finished with two hits, runs, and RBIs. Um, did you guys see how the Dodger game ended? With Shohei Otani on deck. Bases are loaded. Nobody's out. I'm like, let's go. Cough it up. Give me the money. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Until the Dodgers hit into a game ending triple play. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> not only um, not only has it never happened, a game ending triple play with the bases <laughs> loaded. The Padres are the ones that turned it and they clinched a playoff spot. Um, it's never happened before. First time in history. It took a history making event to stick it up old Monty's tailpipe. Yeah. With Shohei Otani on deck. Oh. Huh? Um, Asia Wilson last night. Um, I've fallen to the point in this life and I come to you and I ask for mercy. I've fallen to a point in this life where I am prize picking WNBA games. <laughs> I, and I hesitate to pick up the phone, but I will. Um, I have fallen to a point where I needed Asia Wilson to have uh, 39 points, rebounds, and assists. I took more, so I needed her to have 40 combined points, rebounds, and assists to right. win. She hit the number on the head, 39 push. Uh, okay. And uh, then there's then there was my third, Nathan Avaldi. I needed six and a half strikeouts. He got me seven. So let me get this right. If she just makes another free throw or pulls another <coughs> rebound, your boy wins. If Shohei, the great gambler, isn't on deck when a triple play is turned with the bases loaded, your boy wins. No. Who are you? The Pac-12? I guess I, I guess am. that's Pac-10. Yeah, because I lost again. I'm probably... The baseball winning streak is over. It's all over. I, I, you know. No, Noel, it's not funny. Oh, 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 Tani. It's not funny. Prize picks. These single... <laughs> it's what I love about... It's what I love about prize picks. And I tell you every day, man, when it's good, it's great. It's the best daily fantasy promotion I've ever seen. You deposit $5 into a new prize picks account, account using the promo code MONTY. They're going to give you 50 more. You can play the entire season on 50 bucks, man. Hook it up right now. Download the prize picks app. Use the promo code MONTY. And do not take Shohei Otani ever. Ever. Don believers. Hi, that's me. I'm a, I'm a non believer. <laughs> the unbelievers. <laughs> I am not a believer in the great gambler. Do you believe? And the worst part is, 
I was like, you know, I'm going to take Otani. It's the Padres. It's a big game. I mean, he's he's going to go yard. It's it's Padres Dodger. Dodgers, right? <laughs> I, I'm not going to take Aaron Judge because <laughs> you know and I know what we all know, and that is that Shohei Otani Bro. is on a heater. <laughs> Shohei, the money is is on a heater uh and Aaron Judge of course what did he do against the Orioles on one and a half on a, a the demon was demon the demon was two and a half hits runs and RBIs now I'm not going to take that with Aaron Judge because you and I both know <laughs> that he's going to put up three hit runs and RBIs on a demon, which pays you more money. So I'm going to take Shohei, who's going to be on deck when they hit into a game-ending triple play to clinch a playoff spot for the Padres. Man, how are you going against Aaron Judge at Yankee Stadium? Stay hard! That's all I have for you on prize picks. <laughs> I will have my revenge. Screw In this you. life or the next. And the funny thing is, I hate the Dodgers like it's my job. Like, I, I hate it like they, it, it, like, the, who are you, communists? Like, I hate them like, <laughs> I'm Maximus. They're communists. I hate you. Yeah. I like, and I still, I still took show you're an idiot